Uh, Mr. Kaufman, to introduce the next witness. Uh, thank you, Madam Chairman. Uh, it is a pleasure to welcome a fellow Coloradan and constituent, uh, Brian Greeley, uh, to the committee. Uh, Mr. Greeley is a president of Greeley Enterprises Corporation, uh, DBA, Mako Collision Repair and Auto Painting in Littleton, Colorado. He has established the most successfully, um, the most successful uh, Mako franchise in history, growing his business from a humble beginning of six employees, a 9,000 square foot location with 400,000 in annual revenue, to his current business of over 30 employees with 17,000 uh, feet of workspace and, and four million in, in revenues. Mr. Greeley has received several industry awards, including the International Franchise Association's Franchisee of the Year Award. He became the first inductee of the Mako Hall of Fame Award, which was established in memory of Mako's founder, Anthony Martino. Outside of the workplace, Mr. Greeley enjoys traveling with his wife and daughter, along with various recreational activities, such as gardening and sports. Welcome to the committee, Mr. Greeley. Uh, we look forward to hearing your testimony. Thank you, Mr. Kaufman and uh, Ranking Member Luke uh, DeMeyer for inviting me here today. Um, my name is Brian Greenley, and uh, I do own the Mako Auto Painting Collision Repair in Littleton, Colorado. Uh, Mako itself uh, has 475 stores nationwide and is the largest chain of its kind. My franchise provides an economical choice to customers for auto painting and collision repair. When I purchased my franchise in 1991, I was at the young age of 21. I'm uh, proud to say that my company has grown every year except for one over the past 20 years. I started my business with six employees, as Mr. Kaufman has uh, told you about. Um, today, I do employ 31 full-time employees. There, um, nationwide, there's 900,000 franchise small businesses employing nearly 21 million workers. Um, it's not my position today to convince you of the importance of small business, but to explain what makes my small business successful. It did not take me long to understand that my service competes for discretionary income. My customers have a choice of how and where they spend their money. One key factor was to maintain a cost-effective service that delivers quality, convenience, and most importantly, value. Positioning value over the years has been difficult with rising labor costs, payroll taxes, cost of goods, utilities, property and personal income taxes. One way I've overcome these obstacles has been to increase productivity levels through streamlined production methods and a strong em emphasis on advertising and customer retention. I have always reinvested my profits into my business for additional advertising, expansion, and quality staffing. Earlier in my career, I purchased a plot of land and constructed a state-of-the-art facility. That was done, uh, this was done with the assistance of the SBA 504 um, in 1997. With this assistance, I was able to achieve my goals to increase revenues while expanding my staff and adding new products and services. At this time, striving to control costs. I believe the SBA is a crucial source of funds necessary in maintaining, growing the small business community to continue to add jobs, which is crucial to the economy, especially today. As I have explained my business, I have learned the importance of positioning and leveraging my brand, personal relationships, and buying power to maintain costs. One area of concern is the rising cost of labor, which has more than doubled over the past 20 years. Along with labor costs, costs higher payroll taxes and workers' comp insurance, it has made it difficult to maintain a healthy, healthy gross, gross margins. As a retailer of most competitively priced product and service, I have to lower my gross margins in order to increase revenue. One example is maintaining the lowest advertised price for an entry-level paint service. In 1991, this advertised price was $199. Today, it's $249. Uh, it's only a 25% increase. Advertising and promoting my, promoting my business is essential in the success I have achieved year after year. I have increased my advertising budget by more than 10% and managed to increase gross sales by 5% following a record year in 2009. It's only through my ability to aggressively increase customer count that I keep my business successful, but con constantly rising costs that make it more difficult to provide value for customers. It would there I would therefore respectively ask legislators to understand the impact that any legislation has on job creating small business community. For example, higher taxes, national health care, reform legislation as, and such legislation as the Employee Free Act, or Free, Free Act Choice, Free Choice Act. 
even with increased sales, profit margins remain a challenge to maintain. With small business, tax incentives would be, would be to invest in our own companies. I have, made the I have made that choice to keep my employees who have invested many years of their time. It is not my intention to reduce costs by cutting jobs. Even during the economic slowdown, I have not had to reduce my workforce by even one person. I strive to be competitive. I, find, I strive to find competitive advantages and share ideas with employees, fellow franchise owners, and look forward to continued growth. I ask Congress to embrace those of us willing to invest everything that we make our companies successful and grow our business. Uh, I believe the administration has not placed enough focus on making life a little easier for small business owners such as myself. A bailout or handout is not what we're looking for, but policies recently enacted still being debated from health care to reform to climate change and financial reform do not, from my perspective, help small business. Th thank you, members of Congress, for allowing me to speak today. And um, I, if you have any questions, I'd like to answer them, please. Thank you, Mr. Greenlee. I'd now like to recognize Ms. Bean from Illinois to uh, introduce the next witness. Thank you, Madam Chairwoman, uh, for